the room. Hello, everybody. It's just nice to duty and pleasure to introduce uh, our new colleague at Ori, uh, Sarush uh, Shafi. And uh, uh, Sarush just joined uh, basically this fall. He comes from here, postdoc at Carnegie Mellon. Before that, at ETH Zurich. And he got his PhD under supervision of Daniel Kulbright uh, in the VFL. And uh, so he works on optimal transport, but many other interesting optimization problems, and we'll talk about one of them. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so today I'm going to speak about uh, minimax estimation of optimal transport. Uh, but before getting into the main topic, let me just briefly, uh, briefly get uh, give you an overview of my research, which actually goes beyond the uh, optimal transport and minimax estimation. Uh, so in my research, uh, I aim to develop model and algorithms for optimization under uncertainty. Uh, what I found fascinating, but also challenging about this field, uh, is that there is always some sort of uh, some sort of fundamental trade-off between computational tractability and the statistical guarantees of different models. On the one side, there are some highly efficient computational methods like deep learning uh, algorithms. Uh, that, uh, that are very computationally tractable, but at the same time, they are not uh, come with uh, powerful statistical guarantees. On the other side, uh, we have some very strong statistical models with great out of sample performance, but with poor uh, scalability. So in all these modeling approaches, uh, uncertainty of data is typically modeled by a random variable, denoted here by example. So in the best case scenario, the underlying probability distribution of this random variable is known, and therefore the best possible uh, solutions in terms of statistical guarantees can be obtained by solving a stochastic optimization problem. Uh, in other words, we want to find this decision theta that minimizes the expectation of some loss function. Unfortunately, Doyron's study showed that uh, even simple stochastic programming problems or computationally interactive. But more importantly, the evaluation of the objective function of this minimization problem requires the precise information of the underlying distribution, which is rarely available. In fact, in many modern applications nowadays, P is indirectly observable in the data samples. As such, it makes sense to first estimate the probability distribution from the available data, and then solve a new stochastic program with respect to the estimated probability distribution. Sample average approximation, or the so-called empirical risk and minimization approach, uses the empirical distribution supported on these data points to solve this simpler stochastic optimization problem. Why is it simpler? Because the expectation is now reduced to finite sum, and therefore the tractability will be However, sample average approximation fails in practical situations. For example, uh, it is known, it is well known that uh, sample average approximation leads to overfitting, which means that the in-sample uh, performance uh, is overbiased and uh, it's completely different from the outer sample. Uh, sample average approximation is also too sensitive to adversarial attack and data perturbation. And finally, it is known that uh, this approach fails in the domain adaptation uh, or the main shift uh, setting where the test distribution is a slightly different from the training. So the key to address all these practical challenges is robustness. So in particular, robustness can be imposed explicitly via a minimax approach, which allows the perturbation of the nominal distribution P, or it can be imposed explicitly by penalizing the complexity of, a, of the decisions with a convex or non-convex penalty function. Uh, the minimax approach is aligned with the um, night, night uh, philosophy of decision making, uh, which uh, essentially um, distinguishes between the two concepts of risk and uncertainty. Uh, in particular, facing risk involves knowing probability and chances, whereas uh, facing uncertainty or ambiguity involves unmeasurable probability distribution. Uh, as such, a night, uh, a night and, uh, decision maker or a distribution robust optimizer or a minimax uh, decision maker 
uh, tries to find a decision theta that minimizes the worst case expectation, uh, expected loss over a family of distributions, which is denoted here by a script. So notice that this uh, min-max optimization problems can be also viewed as a two-player zero-sum game, uh, where there is a statistician choosing uh, an estimated theta from the set capital theta, and ad an adversary choosing the distribution Q from the this family of distribution uh, script. So the low complexity decision making, uh, on the other hand, is aligned with uh, Jeffrey's and French uh, decision making uh, philosophy, which acknowledges that the existence of simple law is a quality of nature. Therefore, a simple model should be preferred to a more sophisticated one that uh, explains the current observation slightly better. So with this mindset, the regularization approach tries to find simple solutions by penalizing the complexity of the decisions in the So minimax approach or distribution robots optimization and regularization is the, are the first two key elements in my presentation. The second key element is optimal transport. Uh, optimal transport has a long and distinguished history in mathematics. It dates back to Gustav Munch in the uh, 17th century. Uh, which introduces the concept of, concept of optimal transport for civil engineering applications. Uh, then the optimal transport con uh, concept is used in uh, resource allocation problems in economics uh, by Hitchcock, uh, Kontrovich, and Koopman. Due to their contributions, uh, Kontrovich and Koopman uh, jointly received the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences in 1975. Then Wasserstein and Brenier, among many other mathematicians, use the optimal transport problems and link it to several different fields in, uh, such as probability theory, the statistical uh, analysis, uh, functional analysis, and many other areas. And uh, maybe surprising, uh, surprisingly, uh, this field remains uh, highly active even after more than two centuries. Just as a proof Cedric Vidal in 2010 and Alessio Figal in 2018 received field medal in mathematics because of their contributions in this so but what is optimal transport? So in this presentation, I'm going to use the Kontrovich definition of optimal transport, uh, which, uh, which is defined between two distributions, Q and uh, Mathematically speaking, we would like to find the transportation plan pi for a marginal distribution pi with marginal, uh, a joint distribution pi with marginals Q and P that minimizes the expectation of some transportation cost functions. So the optimal value of this minimization problem uh, amounts the optimal transport cost between these two distributions. So with this uh, kind of short introduction, I'm ready to give you an overview of my talk and the technical part of my talk. So in the first part of my presentation, I'm going to use optimal transport for minimax estimation problems. And in the second part of my talk, I'm going to talk about regularized optimal transport problems. Uh, and we will see that uh, the notion of regularization is also closely related to minimax estimation. So I would like to pause here for a few minutes. Is there any questions so far about the setting? OK. So just a bit of a spoiler about what you are going to see. So we will first see some complexity result. And uh, in particular, we see that uh, computation of optimal transport cost between a continuous and discrete distribution is computationally intractable. This is somewhat uh, dis I mean, uh, disappointing because this essentially implies that this class of optimization problems could be also computationally intractable. However, we provide some uh, conditions for which uh, we can guarantee computational tractability and also the existence of Nash equilibrium for this minimax optimization problems. I will then provide a systematic approach to generate uh, adversarial examples in a classification problem. Uh, after that, I will talk about regularized optimal transport problems, and we will see that uh, the notion of regularization is closely related to a smoothness. Uh, and because of this smoothness, we will see that uh, the classic uh, convergence rate of the stochastic gradient descent algorithm can be actually improved thanks to regularization. So let's start uh, with the first part. Uh, 
If you recall, optimal transport cost between two distributions uh, amounts to optimal value of a minimization problem. Uh, with this notion, with this definition, we define the optimal transport ambiguity set, script P, as a set of all distribution Q, supported on some support XI, whose optimal transport cost to some nominal distribution P hat is at most S. So the size of the, this set is captured by parameter of epsilon. The shape of this set is captured by the transportation cost functions. So this ambiguity set is a statistically well justified, which means that uh, it contains the true probability distribution, the data generating distribution with high probability. In fact, Fournier and Godin proved that uh, you can actually get uh, finite sample guarantees and ensure that the true distribution belongs to this. Therefore, these class of minimax uh, estimators are kind of uh, statistically well uh, And because of that, I will mainly talk about this uh, computational aspect of uh, this uh, minimax optimization. So notice that uh, due to the definition of the optimal transport cost, this ambiguity set, this set of distributions, contains both discrete and continuous distributions. This means that when the center of the ambiguity set is discrete, we need to be able to compute the distance between discrete and continuous distribution so that uh, to see if the distribution belongs to this set or not. When the two distributions are discrete, uh, with at most 10 atoms, it is known that the optimal transport problems can be reformulated as a finite dimensional linear problem. Uh, therefore, we can actually solve uh, these linear programs exactly using linear uh, programming solvers, such as simplex method developed by Zanzi, Cauchyon uh, uh, ellipsoid method developed by Cauchyon, and the interior point method developed by uh, Chrome. Uh, it is also possible to get faster algorithms by regularizing the optimal transport problems with channel entropy and uh, use the simple algorithm uh, to get an approximate solution. Unfortunately, we proved that the computation of optimal transport cost between a discrete distribution and a continuous distribution is computationally hard. Uh, just it is short and hard, but before getting into the result, let me just uh, very quickly tell you a little bit about different computational complexity classes. I think many of you have heard of MP class. So MP class is more about decision problems. Sorry, the previous is your result yes. or standard result? No, no, it's ours. Okay, thank you. So, uh, the f okay. so the class MP involves decision problems where you would like to provide a simple yes or no to a question. And this is actually the hierarchy of uh, hardness of problems in class MP. The class sharp B, on the other hand, uh, involves the counting problems, which instead of providing a simple yes or no, to a question you would like to know how many instances provide a yes answer. A, a counting problem is called P if it is polynomially time solvable with a deterministic Turing machine uh, or computers that we use nowadays. It's called sharp P if it is a polynomially term solvable with non-deterministic Turing machines. The hardest problems in class sharp P are called sharp complete. And at the top of hierarchy, we have sharp hard problems, which may not be even solved in polynomial time with non-deterministic Turing machines. And the result that we have is that uh, the computation of optimal transport cost uh, between a continuous and discrete distribution is actually the hardest problems in the class shop. And uh, I, would, I would like to show you the proof. Uh, and uh, to prove this statement, we consider perhaps the simplest possible scenario, where the continuous distribution mu is uh, uniform distribution over unit hypercube. The discrete distribution mu is just a two-point distribution parameterized by some parameter alpha. And the transportation cost function C is just a standard quadratic so we first prove that minimizing the optimal transport cost between mu and mu alpha is a convex univariate optimization problem. This essentially means that if we would be able to compute this quantity, the optimal transport cost between mu and mu alpha in polynomial time, 
we would be able to find the optimizer of this minimization problem using bisection algorithm in polynomial time. On the other hand, we show that the minimizer of this optimization problem is equivalent to volume of lamps and polytope, a quantity which is known uh, to be sharply hard to compute, thanks to the paper published by uh, Dyer and Chris. Therefore, we have constructed a polynomial time Turing reduction from the problem of computation of polynomial, uh, computation of volume of lamps like polytope to the problem of computation of optimal transport cost, which is mu and mu. Therefore, even in this simple case, uh, the computation of uh, optimal transport cost is sharp. Okay, so this essentially means that when I maximize the expectation of a loss function over all distributions with this satisfying this constraint, the problem could be potentially computationally infractible. Because uh, if the center is discrete, Checking feasibility in this problem is computationally mm -hmm. so, so, so I'll admit I'm very rusty on, on some of the complexity yeah. classes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way I naively think about it is usually how the cost of solving scale to pick at the size of the yeah. example. Yeah. And that's where I'm getting lost of your example, because I don't see what's the size which would be very yeah. So the size of Okay, so you're talking, you're asking about input description. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the input description here is parameter alpha, the interval, the dimension. Okay. Yeah. And and the, and and this result tells you that uh, to evaluate to find the optimal value of this optimization problem, you need. Uh, more than polynomial number of bits in the dimension of the, in the input description of this I see. So, so that means that if alpha is a simple rational number, for mm -hmm. example, I'm not in trouble. This is still an affordable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yes, 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 yes. exactly. But, but the thing is, uh, you can't compute this minimizer, minimizer of this optimization problem up to some epsilon accuracy using rational numbers. But at the same time, this means that you would be able to compute the volume of knapsack polytope up to some uh, accuracy using the same optimizer. But we know that this is not possible. Therefore, uh, the problem that I showed you is also a problem. Thank you so much. No I hope this clarifies it. Yeah, 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 of course. No, 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 I'm talking about five dimensions. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it a polynomial in like uh, the dimension of the yes. like No, no, no. It's not it's polynomial in D. Okay. It's it's super polynomial. It's not we don't have a result that it's exponential in D, but okay. it's not polynomial. Okay. Uh, so exactly what notion of dimension are you talking about? Are you are you talking about the dimension on the space on which the measures live or the yep. dimension of the measure space? So is no, 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 no. RD, for example, if the measure supported them. Okay, so you have a couple of measures supported yeah. on RD, and yeah. you're talking about the transport cost between the measures yeah. on RD yeah. with some cost. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens if, for example, D is fixed to D0, and you multiply by 2D? So what we say is that the time that you need to solve this new problem does not grow by, by polynomial of degree 2. That's like that. So Okay, it's not so, it's, so it's really a result about like uh, optimal transport when you try to compute it on like RD of increasing dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the difficulties with increasing yeah, dimension. Yeah. Thank you. What's your condition on C? So okay, so C here is uh, assumed to be. So in the proof, we assume it. Uh, we just uh, have it a, a standard quadratic function, which is L two square. Would that be different if you use absolute value? Uh, the difference is that so it's here. So when you have a Euclidean norm square, you get this hyperplane at the minimum. When you have L infinity norm or L1 norm, you don't get that. that and you that cannot change? actually get this reduction. Yeah, would that change the complexity? Yeah. So the complexity that I provide you is the worst case complexity. Okay. So I'm not saying that for L1, this problem is easy or not. I'm saying that general transportation problems are short. 
in the dimensions. In the dimensions, so, so, so. all of them are in the dimension. I mean, not all of them, but many. Okay, so we were here. So, yeah, it was kind of hopeless to be able to compute this uh, worst case expectation. Uh, and therefore, it would be also hopeless to solve the primal and dual problems because uh, it's actually at one other layer of difficulty. Uh, and uh, we can hope that this problem is easy to solve if the optimizer of this uh, maximization problem is discrete because we know the optimal trans the computation of optimal transport goes between two discrete distributions of this. The same also applies here. And I will show you some conditions for which uh, the, the strategy of the nature will be a discrete distribution. In particular, we prove that if the nominal distribution P hat is discrete, the loss function L is convex in the decision that we have. The adversary I mean, decided to choose this data set and change it. But Q is just a distribution over the data. Q is a distribution. Not a transformation, right? Uh, uh, this thing center, I'm, I'm, not in, I'm still not fully on Okay, so, so this is one <laughs> sample in your uh, data set. So I just uh, showed this change for one sample. I'm not saying that this is my only sample in my uh, data set. So I just pick up, okay. So what I want to say is that when you are given a bunch of data, the adversary just tries to change some of these data sets. Okay, not all of them. So when you solve this optimization problem, so it doesn't change all of them. So for some of them, QIJ is zero. It doesn't change the other. For those that changes, I have this plot. So I see that this is changed to this for this uh, souping problem and uh, the same for this. Uh, any other question? So we have like half a, I mean, maybe less than half an hour for this question. Yeah. Uh, but, um, okay, so we have an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please walk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. so that result that uh, the worst case uh, Q is going to just shift the point, yeah. is that related to specific L that you're using? Uh, of course, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Uh, this comes from the solution of this maximization right. problem. In the objective function, you have this yes. S. And then, right, and the L, all you're assuming is that it's convex, basically. Image is this. We have time for questions. Just. I, I'm not going anywhere, so. <laughs> That's all? So far? Yeah, so, so far. far. <laughs> So let's move to the second part. So just recall that uh, I showed you that semi discrete optimal transport problems uh, are computationally intractable. Wait, I do have one question yeah. about that. Sure. Um, so a common like paradigm in modern statistics is minimum distance estimation under optimal transport distance. Um, and your worst case example kind of looked like that. Like, uh, it involved like minimizing the sink. Do you have any kind of harness? But usually it's the the the. the so can, can you yeah. repeat your question? I don't like I, I guess a, a common paradigm in statistics is, is minimum distance estimation under the Wasserstein distance. Yes. So which means that you want to find a distribution that is close. A distribution in some family. Which yes. Like for your yes. case, it could be parameterized yeah. by that yeah. alpha. But then what you're trying to get close to is usually some empirical data. So it's not, it, you know, it's some empirical approximation of a continuous distribution. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm wondering if, it would be, I suspect that there are similar hardest results for this kind of minimum distance. I see. Okay, I see. Yeah. So I'm not aware of that. But I think uh, what you're saying may be also related to this hardness result for different but for clustering algorithms. Because yeah, like or neither are, but those are NPR typically. And what we have here is uh, even oh, harder. Oh actually you're right. You can make a clustering problem yeah. this way. That yeah. works. And but but those are NPR then yes. they, what we have here shows that the problem is even harder. Oh even harder. Yeah. Cool. Okay. 
So, um, is this? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so, we show that these semi discrete optimal transport problems are computationally intractable. But despite this intractability, uh, this class of optimal transport problems arises naturally in several different applications, such as a 3D morphing in computer graphics, uh, resource allocations in economics, uh, training generative models in machine learning, and more recently in the construction of early universe from the current observation in the sky in astronomy. So this, mm -hmm. sorry, I just have a question. Yeah. About that. So it's intractable in the dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. dimension in the yeah. top is two and yeah, three. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Okay. Yes. But in uh, generative models, yeah, 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 yeah. In, in this one, yes. here, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to say that even in fixed dimension, how people solve the problem. So even in fixed dimension, uh, the way that people solve these uh, transportation problems is by regularizing uh, the objective function with uh, f divergence between the transportation plan pi and the product distribution mu. So in the discrete case, when both distributions mu and mu are uh, discrete, uh, Couture actually showed that uh, entropic regularization can uh, give us huge computational advantage. However, uh, in the case of semi-discrete case, uh, Jambi and her co-authors uh, applied the stochastic gradient descent algorithm, but they couldn't actually show any theoretical advantage for using optimal uh, for using entropic regularization terms. What we actually implemented uh, ourselves just give us some result like this, which clearly shows that when you regularize the optimal transport problem, you can actually converge in a much faster rate compared to the non-regularized version. And this rate actually matches, what, uh, matches the best possible rate that you can achieve for a stochastic optimization problem. But unfortunately, we also don't have a strong but just to be clear, you are converging to the population level or whatever they are called. The, population the solution level. of themselves. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yes, yeah. yeah. of course. Just to be clear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, why regularization works? Uh, I'm sorry. Isn't there, aren't there algorithms for computing semi discrete optimal transport based on power diagrams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fixed dimension. Two three dimensions. They are all two three dimensions. Not even. Yeah, These don't work in current. Yeah. So why regularization works? And I will then show you how regularization works. So the I mean if we use the control which duality result, uh, we can actually reformulate the semi-discrete optimal transport problem as a convex stochastic maximization problem which involves the expectation with respect to the continuous measure mu. The decision variable phi is called the uh, control which, uh, potentials. The size of uh, phi uh, is uh, n. It's a vector in Rn. The number of n is the number of uh, discrete data points. And we take the expectation with respect to a non smooth function, which is called C transform. So as you can see, this C transform function is clear because it, it's uh, non smooth because it uh, involves this maximization term. And uh, typically, in numerical integration, this leads to computational uh, interactivity. And a remedy which is widely used in this literature is just to replace this smooth, uh, sorry, this non smooth function with some smooth approximation function. So, in this talk, I'm going to use uh, some ideas from randomization to make this. C transfer functions. And instead of having this uh, C transfer function, I just use a C, a psi C bar, which is the uh, a smooth approximation of psi C. And if I use a psi C bar instead of psi C, I get something which I call a smooth optimal transfer. Okay. So let's see how. Uh, uh, C what is the meaning of C-transfer function? So C-transfer function can be viewed as a discrete uh, choice model, which is deterministic, and uh, you have n items, 
and the utility of each item is this. Uh, therefore, the C transfer function just gives you the optimal utility of an individual in a population. So in the in economy, there is also a notion of uh, random utility model, which tries to predict the uh, decisions of uh, a population. Uh, so in these type of models, uh, they assume that the difference between individuals are modeled by some noise di. It's an additive noise to the model. Uh, and the value of the population is uh, computed by taking the expected value of uh, the maximum utilities. So in 2009, uh, Notarajan and his co-authors proposed a semi-parametric discrete model, uh, which uh, assumed that we don't know the of the eye, but we only have some marginal information. And therefore, in this uh, semi-parametric model, they try to find the maximum expected maximum utility under this uh, family of distributions. Okay. They then show that uh, these maximization problems over probability measures can be reduced to a single maximization problem, finite dimensional and also convex that involves uh, this term plus some penalty term which act as regularization. Okay, so we show that uh, using this idea, as long as the cumulative distribution functions of R are smooth, uh, sorry, are, uh, are continuous, and the optimal value of this optimization problem is a smooth in the parameter phi, which means that the, transport, uh, the C transfer function C uh, the C transfer function, uh, the smooth C transfer function is actually smooth. We then prove that uh, essentially there is some sort of duality between regularization and smoothness. In particular, by choosing these functions fi in a smart way, you can actually recover regularization in the primal form. One very important example here is that if the cumulative distribution function is related to exponential distributions, you can actually get shallow entropy or pullback driver divergence, which is related to this uh, simple. Therefore, we have some sort of a probabilistic interpretation for uh, a regularization scheme, which is widely used in uh, machine learning computing. Okay. Now, how regularization slash smoothness really helps? To understand why it helps, we just need to go back and see what are the algorithms that are used to solve these optimization problems. Uh, average stochastic gradient descent is the traditional approach to solve uh, a stochastic programming problem. Not solve exactly, but solve approximately. So the algorithm is very simple. You only need uh, to have a gradient oracle, a stochastic gradient oracle. Uh, and you just update your current solution by taking the uh, step with respect to with, <laughs> with respect to the negative gradient. So the convergence of this algorithm depends on the step size eta, which itself is a function of the properties of your function h. It's known that when h is Lipschitz, you have uh, the convergence one over square root of t. If it is a smooth, you have the same convergence. Therefore, smoothness in general doesn't help. Uh, however, uh, in 2013, Francis Bach showed that if the function satisfied the so-called self-concordant property, you can achieve uh, the optimal rate one point for this point. Now, going back to the semi-discrete optimal transport problems with uh, this smooth function, and with this smooth uh, C transform function, uh, we can actually show that in this problem, this function H has this form. And what we proved is that uh, this function is guaranteed to be Lipschitz when the community functions are uh, continuous. It is guaranteed to be one smooth when the community functions are Lipschitz. And uh, we proved that uh, it is also guaranteed to be self concordant when. Mm, it satisfies this condition. So this condition is not super important because uh, this condition is actually satisfied for the exponential distributions 
which means that whenever I use the pullback driver divergence, for free I have this self concordance, and therefore I will get this type of uh, fast convergence. So that's more or less everything I wanted to cover here. So if you have any other questions about the second part, I'm happy. Uh, okay, yes, yes, maybe I should let someone ask it first, but okay, I'll, I'll go. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll play the role of an adversary. Yeah. So an adversary would, would say that the regular isoptimal transport is not optimal transport. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we started with a beautiful characterization. We are all aware of a beautiful result, I have to say. Check it out. Uh, but, uh, but then again, <laughs> if what we want is to do optimal transport and we regularize, uh, uh, I mean, is there anything for this type of... So I'll ask very specifically, because there is a class of results that people are trying to prove. I'm yeah. not sure how much progress is being made. Um, that is akin to the following problem in trivial linear regression, just to say, just to make to understand exactly what I want to say. Uh, you know, I do fit penalize these squares, so I have a linear regression model, I have a sparse beta, I fit penalize these squares, but I want to, but I will prove that eventually this recovers the true beta, how, which is the arg mean of the unregularized yep. sum L2 criteria. So in other words, uh, is there any sense in which one, once I optimize a regularized thing, do I get to a true, yep. you know, So you are function? talking about kind of a rounding effort. I'm not sure, I'm not talking about algorithms, I'm a, I'm a statistician, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about the probabilistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we can, yeah. we can view it. I think the question not is... To, the not for all, not for all, so that's what I'm yeah. trying to see. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for, uh, that, I, I, I basically, I'm asking your input on this. Yeah. So uh, it's not true in general. Yeah, it's not, definitely. Yeah, it's not but true in general. for small number of solids, it's true, right? Like, um, but how oh, okay, or, or, how no, 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 I'm not telling yeah. you to take epsilon to zero. Oh, if you don't, then no, it's no, not true. No, so, but is there any other, exactly, so, but, but, I, is, but there, okay, that, is there that, any that, progress okay, in this very, area okay. is really the question. Yeah, that's very, so, the thing is, here, here, far, far out there. So here, <laughs> so you can actually use different divergences. And, for example, for chi divergence, you still get a sparse solution. In that sense. I yes, in that, that sense. Mm -hmm. And maybe that also be sure. helpful to get something. To go back to the truth, to the yes. unregularized yes. version, not for And the thing is, I didn't provide it here, but in the paper we also provide the, the, the approximation error when you okay. regularize. So it will be epsilon going to zero, but it's all yes, about yes. rates here. There is right? always, the, it's exactly. always about yeah. you know, a compromise. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. so you get faster algorithm at the cost of right. compromising the exact solution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the, there is somewhere an analysis where maybe it's uh, we haven't. I think. Coming. Yes. <laughs> so I, I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but but no, no, there are approximation results, of course, for the cost for the optimal transport map. I mean, you have now. A lot of approximation results for this entropic framework. For this, I know, but I, I, I didn't like she, it in high dimension. What is it? She's asking uh, about fixed epsilon. Can you say anything about the quality of the solution yeah. not going to zero? And then I can take it. Right? How do you quantify quality? I, well, I'm asking you guys. <laughs> so uh, that's. Uh, yes, could could has this? No, they have the finite, the finite epsilon and the qualities. Right. No, but I mean, if I, if I take a solution from yeah, this, that? That right. it should give me a map that? and I build a map like, from it, so and I'll have a map that depends on epsilon, and so I measure the true norm between the true map and this map, and I tell you how, it, how small it is with epsilon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't mean to get such a... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. For you have a question. You, you have that. Go on, one person. Okay. So I see people use the term as a regularization that gets you a lot of. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I said. So if you have quite a emergence. Okay, that's what we mean by quite Yes, yes, yes. And still, this result that I showed you holds. 
this, per this performance you see require emergency. Can you interpret that as a regularization for the C transform as well? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Another thing I have uh, here is that when C equal to uh, C is quadratic term, then we know the C transform is basically a variant of the Lagrange transform. Yeah. So we have fast algorithms. Yes. So that's the same thing here, like the quadratic part will be a causal singularity of the difficulty. So I think those fast uh, C transform stuff is only for two three, as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. So it's like fast Fourier transform, which holds for two. Any other questions? Am I free to go? <laughs> <laughs>